Hi, I'm Tom Farmer, and welcome to Pathways of Hope. Today's Gospel reading from Mark chapter 9 has Jesus teaching the disciples the attitudes that they must have in order to be free from sin. He uses the metaphor of salt to teach us how to preserve ourselves from sin and avoid corruption, the same way that salt can preserve food and avoid spoilage. He further teaches us that we will be salted by fire. Lord, teach us what your word is telling to us. Amen. Okay, Jesus was a master teacher. All right? Even the rabbis were taught by him, even when he was the age of 12. Now, I, I'm a consultant and I'm an educator, uh, and I'm trained in, in, and certified in education uh, for adult education. We use the term competence to refer to knowledge, what you must know, skills, what you must be able to do, and attitudes, which is the willingness or the intent. It's, it's having the ability to do the thing that's got to be done at the right time, even though it's difficult. That's attitude. A person lacking attitude, we say, has a bad attitude. They don't care. So attitude is important. We have to care. All right. So um, Jesus wants us to have the right attitude. So to really care, uh, and he's teaching us the why behind avoiding sin. So we will have firm intent to avoid sin and uh, to truly will with our will to do right and avoid sin. All right. He wants the disciples uh, to be willing to make personal sacrifices. And this is a tough gospel to hear. All right. This gospel is not mainly about the how but about the why, why to avoid sin. Now, I mentioned the will, you know, willpower. Oh, geez, I wanted to lose weight, but boy, I just lacked the willpower. I wanted to avoid this temptation, but I lacked the willpower. He gives us a solution as well, and I'll get to that. But I first want to talk about attitude. This is what Jesus is trying to do, is teach us to engage our wills. That's part of our soul. It's not up to the brain cells. It's up to our will that says yes, that chooses. And uh, this, is, this is a function of the soul. It's not a function of, um, of the brain cells. Uh, although transformation of our minds is essential, but there is also the, the soul, the invisible uh, me that must choose and can know what is right and wrong. So Jesus is speaking to our will, to our soul, if you will. So let me read verse 42 or 48. And I want you not to like listen to figure out, you know, instructions and how to, but really Jesus imparting to us the attitude. All right. This is a little tough, but Jesus says, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung round his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell. Okay? Uh, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Now, this is not instruction. Although you might say he's telling us to pluck out our eyes, cut off our hands and feet. I think he's teaching attitude with, this, with these verses. The how comes later when he's talking about salt and fire, and I'll get to that in a minute. So sometimes, again, a teacher aims for the head, imparting knowledge. Other times, a teacher aims for your heart to build will. Okay, um, so let's move on now to the how. If verses 42 to 48 address the why, verses 49 and 50 refer to the how. Verse 49 and 50, for everyone who, for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltness, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is Revised Standard Version, maybe different from what's in the reading. So everyone will be salted with fire. 
Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltness, how will you season it? Or how will you restore its saltness? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Now, let's talk about salt. Salt must not lose its saltness or its taste according to Mark's gospel. And the same warning from Jesus is also found in the gospels of Matthew and Luke. Now, Old Testament, Leviticus 2, verse 13, Moses instructs the Israelites how to present their grain offerings. Verse 13, season all your grain offerings with salt. Do not leave the salt of your covenant of your God out of your grain offerings. Add salt to your offerings. Okay, notice he says the same thing three times. Okay, in the Bible, whenever something is said three times in a row, that's like, do not ignore this. Don't miss the point. Season all your grain offerings with salt. Don't leave it out of your grain offerings. Add salt to your offerings. I hope you get the point. Salt is essential. Don't leave it out. Now, what does Apostle Paul say in Colossians 4 verse 6? He says, let your speech be gracious, always seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Salt preserves food from spoilage. Salt purifies. Leviticus says, season all your grain offerings with salt. And in Colossians, Paul says, let our speech be gracious, gracious, always seasoned with salt. So there's a carryover from the Old Testament command to put salt in all your offerings and also let our speech always be seasoned with salt. Okay, so what do they mean and how do we do this? All right. So in today's reading, verse 50, Jesus says, have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. But then let's back up to verse 49, right before verse 50. He says, everyone will be salted with fire. Oh, now I'm confused. Salt, fire, what's going on here? What does the New Testament refer to when it talks about fire? Okay. Uh, almost entirely the New Testament when it refers to fire is talking about the Holy Spirit. So is Jesus teaching us that the Holy Spirit is like the new salt? Everyone will be salted with fire. I believe so. John the Baptist said that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. After Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples as tongues of fire, the disciples were transformed. They spoke boldly and knew how to answer those who questioned them. And they lived peaceably with one another. So by the grace and sanctification of the Holy Spirit, we too, as disciples of Christ, can be transformed by the Holy Spirit by asking God to write his law upon our hearts, thus preserving us from sin, from corruption, like salt, and enabling us to live at peace with one another. So Jesus says, everyone will be salted with fire. So brothers and sisters, let us be aflame with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And may our souls desire more than ever to be free from sin, to will more purely, to keep our saltness. Amen.